click the bell icon to turn on notifications. You might be familiar with the capabilities of Excel data validation drop-down lists. We can create a list of items based on a range of cells, a named range or a comma separated list. But did you know that you can create cascading or multiple dependent drop-down lists of unique entries? Well, if you didn't, a cascading drop-down list displays choices depending on the value selected in the first drop-down. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create them, along with a couple of other tips and tricks to ensure that your data validation drop-down lists are always kept up to date automatically. So if you're ready, let's dive into it. So before we jump into creating our data validation lists, we're just going to take a moment to look at the data that we're using and also do a bit of preparation work. Now, this data here is just some data related to maybe some employees. I have their name in column A, their department, their job title, the date they were hired, and then finally their salary in column E. And the first thing I'm going to do here, because as we know, a table always makes life easier, I'm going to control A to select all and then control T to create my table. And I'm going to change my table style because why not? And then the final thing I'm going to do here is just name my table. So let's give it a name of employee data and hit enter. Now, what I'm aiming for here is in column H, I want to have a drop down list that's going to allow me to select the individual department. And then depending on what my selection is for department, I want to then have a drop down list for job title that relates to the department. So, for example, if I select sales from the department drop down, I only want to see job titles that fall underneath the sales department. So, for example, sales manager and sales assistant. And we can create these multiple dependent drop down lists using a combination of the unique function, filter, and data validation. Then finally, right at the end of this lesson, we're going to use a VLOOKUP to pull back the salary depending on what I've selected in those drop downs. So let's start out with a little bit of preparation work. Now I've got a little preparation area over here, which I'm going to hide once I've finished using it. And the first thing I want to do is set up a data validation drop down list for the department. Now, if we look at my department column, you'll see that I have lots of repeating departments. So marketing, 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 customer service, finance, so on and so forth. And what I want is just a list of the unique departments. So for that, I'm going to use the unique function. And this is a reasonably straightforward function. All I need to do is select my array. So the column that I want to pull out the unique values from. And that is pretty much it. Close my bracket, hit enter, and I get those five unique departments. So now I have my unique list. I'm going to use that for my data validation drop down. So I'm going to click in cell H2, up to data, data validation, and we're going to choose our favorite, which is list. So let's select the source which is this range just here. And I now have my first data validation drop down menu containing those unique values. So, so far, so good. So now what I need is I need to have a dependent drop down list for job title. And once again, if we look at the job titles that we have in column C, you can see that I have some repeats in here. So customer service agent, sales assistant, accountant, so on and so forth. So I want to also pull out a unique list here. Now, in order to get this to work, I need to also use the filter function because I basically want to say I only want to see records that correspond to the value in cell H2. So I'm going to use a combination of unique and filter to achieve this. So let's type in unique and then straight away we're going to dive in to our filter function. Now, what's my array? Well, I'm looking for the job title, so I'm going to select that range comma, what do I want to include? Well, I want to include every time the department is equal to what we have in cell H2. And that's all I really need. 
So let's close off both the unique and filter formulas. Hit enter and there I have my unique list. Let's check to make sure this works. If I click on sales, you should see that those change to the job titles relevant to the sales department. If I go to HR, we have HR assistant. If we go to customer service, I have customer service agent. And the cool thing about this is that if any of my data changes, this is going to dynamically update. So let's pretend that Lance has moved into HR and he now has the position of HR manager. You can see that that automatically updates and it's added HR manager down here. So when we set this up as a data validation, it's going to appear in that drop down list. So let's do that part now. I'm going to click in cell H3, back up to data validation. We're going to create another list. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the first one only and add a hash symbol after it. And this is a great little tip when you're working with data that's likely to expand. So if I start to add in more job titles related to HR and this list starts to grow, just selecting the top one and then adding a hash symbol will ensure that everything always gets included no matter how many items you add. Let's click on OK and check to make sure that's working. I can see both job titles. And now if I switch to marketing, I can see both of those marketing job titles. So my dependent lists are working well so far. What about if I wanted to add a third drop down in? Let's take a look at how we do that. So maybe now I want to see all of the names of the people within these departments who hold this specific job title. So I'm going to add another little heading just here called name. And let's just make this nice and neat and use our format painter to make it look similar. And now underneath in our preparation area, let's do another filter. Now, when it comes to the name, I know that all of these people are unique entries. We don't have the same person working in two different departments. You might do, but in this case, we don't. So I don't need to use the unique function. I can simply do another filter. So what am I filtering for? What is my array? Well, I'm looking for the name. So we're going to select the name range, comma. What do I want to include? Well, I want to include every time the job title is equal to whatever we have in cell H3. Close the bracket, hit enter, and now I have my list of people. And if I go through and change this to something else, let's select sales and sales assistant, you can see that list is updating. So now I can use this and create my third dependent data validation dropdown list. Up to data into data validation. We're going to select list. And once again, I'm going to use that trick of selecting just the top cell, pressing the hash symbol to accommodate the range expanding. Click on OK. And now I can see all of the sales assistants and I can pick them out of the list. So with just a few steps there and a few different techniques, you can really get this working well. And of course, if you want to, you can just simply hide your preparation column so that that is out of view. Now, just to finish this off and make it a little bit more functional, maybe I want to use these drop down lists to go through and select a department, a job title, and then an employee. And ultimately, I want to see what their salary is. So I'm going to create just a little salary heading down here. And once again, let's just steal this formatting using the format painter. And what I'm going to do here is a very simple VLOOKUP. So I'm going to say equals VLOOKUP open bracket. What is my lookup value? Well, my lookup value is the person's name, H4. Comma, where am I looking up this person's name? What is my table array? Well, I'm looking up this person's name in my table. Comma, which column do I want to pull back? Well, I'm looking for the information from the salary column. And if you remember when you're using VLOOKUP, Excel numbers columns from left to right. So if I count across, I can see that the salary column is column number five. And then finally, am I doing an approximate or an exact match? Well, I want it to exactly match the name Bernard Powell. So I'm going to say false. Close my bracket, hit enter. And we need to apply a little bit of formatting here. So let's jump up and do some currency formatting and take those decimal places down. And if I do a quick visual check, I'm going to do a quick find for Bernard. 
Here he is just here. If I take a look at his salary, it's 43,324. And if we take a look at the result we've got, that is correct. And now if I go through and change this to, let's say, HR, let's take a look at our HR manager. And we only have Lance in there, $50,514 a year. And Lance Norman is just here. And I can see that, yes, that is correct. So we've seen quite a lot of techniques there. And I think you'll agree that structuring your data drop downs in this way can be really effective when you're working in your Excel spreadsheets to really extract the data that you're interested in in a super simple way. That's it for this video. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.